uh, a moment or so. So the broadcast is live. We'll start in a few moments when we get more people on the line. Today we have a special guest which I'm going to announce uh, very shortly after the announcements. And something that I found really appalling in one vegan magazine. That is coming up. This is Michael Anfield, and thank you for joining us, everybody. So we got a few more minutes here, about a minute or so. Uh, so we're going to get back to you in about a minute. But I'm. Um, Reading here, magazine from Hippocrates uh, Institute or Hippocrates Institute, uh, Healing Our World. They come with a, they uh, publish a magazine called Healing Our World, and uh, it's supposedly a vegan magazine. I read uh, a few of, of the magazines, and they have very good uh, health and spiritual and ethical articles in there. Uh, along, of course, with, you know, vegan advertisements and so forth. One, uh, one uh, advertisement did not really, uh, it stroke, uh, strike me like it's not a vegan article. Oh, sorry, it's not a vegan advertisement. And uh, it's Excalibur, America's best dehydrator. So the advertisement says uh, this summer, Make homemade granola bars, vegetable chips, unsweetened dried fruits, all natural fruit leathers, and jerky from quality meats. So that's something to think about here with advertising in a vegan magazine, uh, promoting uh, non-vegan like quality meats. So we're going to talk about a little bit about that today. And we're going to talk about something else from Barbara, Dr. Brian Clement, uh, who is the uh, co-director of Hippocrates Health Institute. So we're going to uh, talk a little bit about him and, of course, get to our special guest, because that's what it's all about today. Special guest today. Uh, I don't know why the video says live in 32 minutes, but we're on. <laughs> so let's go with the announcements today. And then uh, two, uh, well, sorry, one announcement that we're going to, I'm going to ask the guest a question, what she thinks about this. Okay. So as you know, uh, my new book is, in pre-order, it's our path to freedom, how we can live a, a freer and more peaceful life. And I just released, uh, I just um, uploaded uh, the video on my reading, the introduction of the book. So you can check that out on the YouTube channel. And definitely, uh, I talk not only about the, I, I, I not only read the introduction, but I talk a little bit about the book in each chapter as well. So you can check that out. It's about 20 minutes or so. And uh, that's really about it. That one is, uh, that you can get actually on Amazon. So it's pre-order Kindle. And by August, I think I'm going to be coming out also with the paperback version of that. So stay tuned for that. So it's it's a special Kindle price, so if you want to get it, just go to weareinterconnected.com or directly to Amazon. So we have question here. This is the volume 37, issue four of Hippocrates Health Institute Healing Our World magazine. We're gonna ask uh, the guest coming on, we're gonna ask her, view on what she thinks about Brian. I don't know if she knows Brian Clement. He holds a PhD. He's a co-director of Hippoc 
Hippocrates Health Institute or Hippocrates Health Institute. And he has this one section here in the magazine. Ask Brian. Okay, so watch this. Somebody asking Brian. So breastfeeding isn't an option for me. So this is somebody asking a question to him. Breastfeeding isn't an option for me, but I want to supplement with the highest quality products. What supplements are safe for a baby to take? What would you recommend? So this is a someone asking Brian Clement a question. Okay. And Brian Clement, from my understanding, this magazine, I read through at least three or four of these magazines, and they seem to be all vegan, except, of course, for what we just mentioned, that one advertisement that uh, promotes using their dehydrator for quality meats. Yes, sir. We don't want that to happen. So what is his answer to breastfeeding isn't an option for me, but I want to supplement with the highest quality products. What supplements are safe for a baby to take? What would you recommend? And this is Brian Clement's answer. And Brian Clement is supposedly a vegan. He says, if a mother cannot breast breastfeed, the only reasonable option is, drum roll here, raw organic goat's milk. Raw organic goat's milk in a vegan magazine, Hippocrates Health Institute. What the? Okay, so we have guests on today that we're going to ah, introduce her. Uh, her name is uh, Krieta Martinez. It's a long time ethical fruitarian, currently writing a book. She is partnered with author Mango Wadzak and a compassionate and loving being. And she can be found uh, on uh, Mango's website, fruitnot.net. So, may, um, sorry, uh, Krieta, what? Thank you for coming on the line and joining us for this interview and chat. What do you think about that? What I just mentioned about Brian Clement. Yes. Hello, Michael, and the listeners. Hello, how are you? And uh, how are you? thank you for uh, inviting for this interview. And um, I hope my English is good enough and people will understand. Yeah, just speak uh, closer. Just speak closer to the mic if you can, as close as you can. Okay, is this better now? That's good, thank you. That's good, thank you. Okay, so the questions are ridiculous. They don't, they not fit to vegan magazine whatsoever, of course. It's a silly to promote uh, to animal products in vegan magazines and a uh, bit uh, surprising, I may say. Uh, but nevertheless, um, it's good to my right to people who edit this magazine to point out that they should keep the topic. And uh, of course, if uh, the, the questions, they always vague an answer for such a question, like uh, with the breast milk. Um, if there is such a big conflict and mother for some reason can't breastfeed, I honestly, myself, and this is responsibility of every single mother, what she decide to do, but I would feed my child just fruit juices. Aha. Uh -huh. So you think you think fruit freshly juice. made at home. Right, right. Do you think fruit juices pure made at home? is the adequate food to feed to a very newborn baby yes i think so because uh, i as i know i live on fruit for so many years and it's the best food the human body can uh, receive it's actually natural food of human and uh, if the baby can't eat drink for drink milk i mean mother's milk for whatever reason I'm convinced myself, and that's what I would definitely do. I would feed a child a fruit, juices. I actually want to also say, this is interesting also because I 
in my baby was refusing to drink my mother's milk. Uh -huh. Because I believe I found it too toxic for me. Well, it, 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 it depends on... And she uh, believed... Uh, it depends on what your mother was eating, right? Yeah, that's right. But she was still healthy enough. But I don't know. I can't say it. I don't remember the details. I know only what she told me. And I only assuming from my later on experience. And that is that I always want only fruit to eat. When I wow. start having choice to eat. And, and also when my mother, because she said she was crying, she thought I'm going to die because I wouldn't drink from her. <laughs> and right. I wouldn't drink even the formula. I wouldn't drink even formula. So she would try to give me anything blended. And she said only I would eat was fruit. So I am a proof. I am the child who actually was weaned on, I mean, uh, instead of breast milk fed on fruit juice right so what what do you think about and giving, giving another giving another mother's milk to this baby for example well that's totally personal uh, decision right. yeah uh, if, if those ladies make that decision and to freely uh, share the milk with the other lady. I maybe say yes, but I'm not sure if the other woman's milk is really suitable for that particular baby, because I uh -huh. believe every mother has a unique uh, diet on its own, and therefore the chemistry of the body is different, and therefore the milk is different. So, well, and each child would be more, uh, might be um, adjusted to what the mother ate since the conception. And I was just wondering, I know you're not a doctor or a nutritionist or something, but uh, I was just wondering why would it be not possible for that mother to breastfeed her child? <laughs> I mean, every mother is supposed to be able to breastfeed their child, no? Yeah, I know, but you know, there are there are options. Like what happened to my mother, the, I fully refused to drink milk, mm -hmm. any milk. All right. So well, it how, can be how, very how individual, old, and I believe. How old were you when you? Do you think you were a baby when you started started eating fruit? Did you didn't you eat anything else? Like didn't you eat meat or dairy or egg or anything? Well, I was a um, very bad eater, as they call me. Uh, I don't remember when I ate those first things. They eventually got them into me. But uh, as far as I know, and from what I was told, uh, I must be at least around three years old when I was accepting such a food as, uh -huh. as is different from food. And, uh, also, through all my life, I always tend to eat fruit and uh, or vegetables or very light meals, and I fully refuse to eat anything heavy. So any gravies, meat dishes, dumplings, uh, uh -huh. cakes, uh, pies, and all the common uh, food most of people eat, I would refuse. I was I was born also with aversion to sugar. So when I smell sugar, I felt sick, so I couldn't eat anything sweet, sweetened uh -huh. with sugar. To, so, yes, that's my experience. And that's therefore, I believe, if you give a child just a good quality, top quality of fruit juice, a variety of freshly squeezed at home fruit juice, you can't go wrong. I'm sure it's much better than any other superficial milk right or, well, you, don't know what they're putting, you don't know what they're putting in there even, and the uh, toxins and all the things that come from uh, animal agriculture 
so we don't want that. I mean, if it's uh, if it's bottled mother's milk, then it's a different story. But even that, like if the mother is not at least vegan, then you're taking all the toxins from the meat, dairy, and eggs that the mother is eating. So that's exactly that's not definitely not good. <laughs> so why do you think? That's what I said. Early, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I would like to say to add again that I mentioned that that it really depends on the two women agreement and what that woman eat mm. eats in conception of the child and what the other woman eats and it's not as simple to, to just get milk from other baby. I know it's possible, but I mean from another mother, I know it's possible, but I don't believe it's also the the best solution. Yeah, Always. Because I, I feel that there's a bond between the mother and the child and the bond is is very secure when uh, the mother gives the baby milk her, her own milk. So if it's somebody else's milk, then that bond can be kind of lost, you know, I think. That bond will be uh, made with the other woman and uh, yeah. the child would be confused and uh, will grow with the confusion already. But uh, yes, yeah. it's definitely not natural. Right, right. So what, uh, at what age do you think you started like incorporating fruit? Was it like, your, like, like I mean, sorry, not what age. <laughs> um, like why, why did you have a, like a, such a, um, why did you have such a clinging on to food? Why did you think fruit was was perfect food for you? Why not? Why not some greens or why not some carrots or why not some you know pasta or why not this or that? Why fruit? Why did you kind of gravitate towards fruit? Well, the gravity was pretty natural to start with. I was naturally like as I mentioned before. I was just. All I was seeking for food was fruit. Obviously, it wasn't so in my family, so I have to do compromises. But the more I was older and getting more free in my own choices, I would um, get and more and more fruit into me. And a lot of it was secretly because I was also always told, you eat too much fruit, you will be sick, and so on. So, um, and how, how, many years, I was because, how many years has it been so far? Like. You haven't died yet. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm 60 years old now. Maybe I misunderstood your question. I'm 60 years old and I was 30 years, 28 years old. Well, I'm 62, be precise. And when I was 28, I escaped uh, to communism, where it was a little bit of yeah. fruit only in the winter time and in the shops and stuff. And I always was craving it, and I always didn't have enough of it. So when I managed to uh, left, escape communism and, uh, and uh, arrive in Australia, there was so much fruit everywhere and so cheap. I was full in a fruit euphoria, and I was telling to myself, well, I'm going to eat now fruit till I get sick of it. I'm just not going to eat anything else than fruit. And, <laughs> and yeah, and also uh, because I have a lot of time to think, I never work in my life and, you know, I, I like to read books and think about things. And uh, mm. because I was questioning food, uh, food as well, uh, that's why I become vegetarian, then I become vegan. And uh, maybe eight months later, I become fruitarian because I didn't stop questioning the food. And now when I was in Australia, I was lying in the sun thinking, well, if I eat fruit, I can't, I won't kill. Because I was reading Bible as well, and in the Bible, this sentence, do not kill, you know, I was thinking about it. That sentence was getting me back again, dra dragging me back, make me think what that really means, you know, what not to kill. And then I yeah. come to conclusion, nothing. If not kill, that means don't kill nothing at all. You know, mm. uh, that means I can't kill anything I want to eat. 
I don't kill animals, yes, I don't take their milk, blah, blah, blah. But I still, and I went through, in my mind, full process of, if I want to eat bread, what I will have to do? You know, what's the process actually, what's involved? And I found out I will have to turn the field, I will have to put the seeds on, I will have to wait for harvest, then I will have to harvest it, then I will have to take a grind out, then I have clean the grind itself, then I will have to mill the grind, then I will have to make a dough, then I will have to make a fire and have a special oven and bake a bread. Too much, too much. And steps. I thought, no way. Huh? Too many steps. Yeah, and I said, no way I would go through this process. Too much killing involved, hmm. including harvest, harvest of the grains. Secondly, there is so much work involved, I would be crazy. So, so to make food, my is, own uh, food is fast food. Food is fast food. It's just right so there. The fruit is there. Fruit is ready. Fruit is free. Fruit is given it to me by tree. Fruit is meant mm -hmm. to be eaten. Fruit carries the life inside in a form of seed. There is another generation of that plant. Which have a, which I give a chance to grow if I eat it and throw the seed on the ground in the soil somewhere. I don't even have to bury it. I just can throw it somewhere and see right. what the seed can do itself. You know, my bee wind and some animals doesn't matter. It's having its own journey. My journey is go pick the fruit from tree or under tree, eat it, and pass on the seed. That's beautiful. Fruit with little seeds. I eat with the seeds, including like strawberry, kiwi, and so on. I go in the toilet in the garden, tomatoes. I get passion fruit seedlings coming out. I have fruit seedlings in the garden coming out. And not all of them live because they have their own enemy. They again have their own story. That's not my full responsibility. I can control garden, but I also can have a just uncontrolled garden, which lives on its own accord. So you just, you basically just uh, plant um, from your droppings, you plant everywhere, right? Uh, along your garden, through your garden. Yes. And uh, tell me a little bit uh, yes, more. Yes, we don't waste anything. Sorry. We don't waste anything. It's a perfect fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And also so it you, contains you still all buy, the seeds. You still buy uh, things from the food from the supermarket, like produce, or do you grow all your own food now? Well, we, that, that's our goal, grow our own. It's not long enough. And, you know, as you know, the fruit trees take a while to grow it. And we grew a bit of stuff just from the seed of the fruit we ate. Uh, later on, we bought more fruit trees. It took us a while to find a place. Anyway, now we found a place. We here, we have a trees. They start fruiting. We're getting our first citrus, but that's our goal. Or we get uh, our first popos, we getting our first passion fruit and s some other fruits. But the, our goal is to get fully self-sufficient. Obviously, it won't happen in everything because we live in a climate where we can, for example, grow durians or rambutans. So oh, you don't, this you, kind of fruit. You don't, live in a tropical, you don't live in a tropical area to grow to grow those fruits? We live in tropical areas, but this is wet tropics grow this fruit, which is only a few kilometers away from us. We just drive 35 kilometers and we are in wet tropics and we can grow durian. But we don't want to live in wet tropics because there is too many mosquitoes and some other stuff like this. 
and crocodiles and what have you and me and mango we prefer more like peaceful environment you yeah, know yeah. not so many predators kind of well don't uh, we you have worry. a huge just snake so we live we'll be living we'll be living like that in the garden of eden soon yes i know and so anyway mm -hmm. we have a now this we live in savannah it calls it's a dry tropics we have oh. only rain season and the wet tropics they have a rain yeah, they have a plenty of rain all year round. We have a six months almost no rain and six months on and off rain. Right. So for your idea, and also the wet tropics are on the average might be two, three degrees warmer day oh. and night. I see. That's Celsius, yeah. Mm. For people that are That's in the right. US. In backwards. <laughs> so, yes, it's backwards. You're, loving, you're, you're loving it where you are. So this is your permanent home. Well, we hope so. It's not ours, but the uh, owner said we we can live here for the rest of our life. He's very happy with him, and we are happy with him. He's environmentally friendly. We have a solar power set house. All water coming from natural channel by. Uh, uh how they call it it comes down on its own oh have so you have, a, you, have a mountain, you have a mountain water mountain water yeah we have a water from some channel from some huge lake up in the mountain uh -huh. um which is reservoir for all the this big area called tablelands at the front tablelands right uh, which is the savannah with uh, dry tropics and uh, because oh. and uh, we also every house here have a water tank and we all collect water rain water that's a, that's a norm in australia yeah that's good that's good yeah excellent so before we forget mm. uh, i'm going to be talking to you <laughs> a little bit about uh two things about your book we're going to be talking about and also uh documentary that you were you and mango were uh starring in so i want to talk a little bit about that so tell us a little bit uh in detail uh what your book is uh is on like give us some tip like give us some hints or whatever like what are you what are you writing about it you, you know give us some kind of intro to your new book okay well, I'm writing this book for many years now, on and off. And actually, I happened writing in a process. I end up writing two books. So I'm writing two books at once at the moment. Uh -huh. And one is, yes, one is purely about the fruit and how it's applied to my life in what whatever direction and level and what have you uh, from the all all aspects i can think of and i use the fruit in my life since last i since i fully started with it and uh, my experiences with um some other people who follow my advice and got on a fruit uh, to heal their whatever they need to heal and uh, the second book is my bio about my life uh, since born since the day i was born till up to date it may come up in more than one volume because my life i must say was pretty rich so far and uh, and uh, that will also though include to all the fruit which is part of my life you know mm -hmm. that that would be also a big part of that as i told you before from the beginning of my life i'm very connected to fruit yes yes but uh you started actually philosoph philosophizing on fruitarianism when you were in your 30s so it seems like 28. 28 okay so 28 and um so it's been a little over 30 years now 
that you've been really fully into this lifestyle and path. And we can see that you're still alive. So you're not in a hospital like all the other people with diabetes and cancer and heart disease. Uh, going, you know, to the pharmacy to collect, you know, get some, you know, pills and medicine and supplements or whatever you need. <laughs> so, in your daily I life, definitely. you feel you feel pretty pretty healthy, right? Tell us about the health, your health. I'm now. healthy. Tell us a little bit about your health since you've been uh, since you've been doing this. Yes, thank you. Well. I am a lucky person. I was born healthy child. I was growing up healthy child. Uh, my my big uh, obstacle in health was I have a very very bad accident when I was car accident when I was 13 year old, and that weakened, you know, my all body systems. I have right. a broken spine. I had a my spinal cord was also broken. And I oh. was almost dead, and mm. I couldn't walk for two years at all after my accident. I had to learn again how to walk. I was actually told I would be. When, when was that? Sick. When, when was the accident? At, at 13? I was 13 years old, and it happened in Czech Republic. I was still living in oh. the Czech Republic then. Okay. Yes. And uh, so. Nevertheless, uh, in a hospital, yes, they mess me up big time with a lot of different medications and stuff. And uh, they really make a big signature on me, negative signature on me. But as soon as I take my life back in my own hands, free of uh, the hospital, I was very quickly recovering because, of course, I went back to my fruit. I stopped taking all the medication they would give me before. You know, I was before in a hospital. I, I didn't have a way around it. I had to take what they give it to you. They stay there. They wait till I ate it. I didn't, didn't have a no choice. Then one girl once taught me in a room. I also knew I was a tricky mind person. But once, thankfully, I have a one friend in a room in a hospital on the beginning, and she hide the pillow in my mouth and then spit it when the nurse turned around, which I was doing for later on. Yeah, but there were things like injections and stuff I couldn't avoid, you know. And anyway, this would be a very long story. So my health over there was a bit, bit uh, munched up kind of thing. And I make it nice and smooth again once I could. And I was never, I never had any health problem, only running nose, you know, and the common things like people have sometimes constipation, sometimes diarrhea, sometimes little headache, but never big headaches, nothing, nothing major. Nothing serious, yeah. And I consider no, myself, yeah, and I, I consider myself to be healthy, then I become vegetarian, I felt much better, my digestive system and start working better. I become vegan very soon after that. Anki all the time. I much everything clear much more from my body and so on. And the the, the, the biggest revolution my body uh, experience when I already thought I'm on the top of the earth, I'm doing the best I could. Uh, uh, not I was seeking help with my diet. Uh, always choose my diet by standards of ethics and I always learn I did the best decision I could and it actually give me good gifts I feel better and with Freud it was like magnified hundred folds magnified right. the goodness of it, the, 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 all the benefits the way I, I, I asked how I felt. I knew straight away. I discovered the secret which is kept for humans. And that secret is the humans are by nature fruitarians. Mm -hmm. I was convinced. Right. So, and yeah. 
and I never have a health problems. I have a bad mm -hmm. teeth because I had them already since childhood. That's a different uh -huh. story. That's because the doctors, I have to go with school to doctors and they will always do something. I never have a, I never experience headache or feeling any hole in my tooth. Yet each time we go with school to dentist, since I was six years old, they always drill or did something to me. So they fully damaged my teeth. By the time I was 28 years old and I came to Australia, I was half, my teeth was most of them damaged by the dentists, not by me or my diet. Mm -hmm. But that was only my health problem. Otherwise, my general health always perfect, no problem whatsoever, anywhere. Did, and, you ever, um, did you ever get a blood test? I mean, I know you don't believe in those yes, things. Yes, I actually, by, by accident, yeah. I did, uh, for no uh, for no other reason than I, this is only about three years back, I got bitten by some vicious, poisonous thing. I was doing all right, I was doing all right, but it still wasn't healing and one month later i was start getting high fevers and i was start throwing up and all this and i my mind went a bit panicky and uh, i admit i have a tendency to panic at the certain situation due to my you know, past experiences of my life and uh, i panic and i went to see doctor Mm -hmm. which was a bad move, which was a very bad move, and I know that now, and way that, but also what I, what come out from it was, was a blood test, which, which was perfectly perfect, and that mm -hmm. doctor did not believe it, because the doctor actually knew we lived, we and Mango, we lived on the foot, and as uh, soon as I come with her with this problem, because before I have to see her before, because I'm, I'm disabled, I must see doctors for my disability pension. And because I drive in car, I need to see once in a two, three doctor to give me certificate. I can drive car, yes, right. by hands, by hand controls. And, and, and so uh, that's factors. And she knew, I would never tell the doctor, but Mango told her when we visited her once, uh, on the beginning, uh, that uh, she, we eat only fruit. And as soon as she got me in her room there, uh, uh, on my back, you know, uh, asking her for help, uh, she would, uh, uh, she would uh, tell me right away, ask me if she can get my blood as well, because she had a suspicion, because I'm on a fruitarian diet, that I have a <laughs> too much sugar in my blood, I don't have enough <laughs> calcium, I don't have enough iron, I don't have enough protein, I don't have <laughs> enough what have you. And I said, feel free, take my blood, uh, I'll let you. She did with the result later on, and she said, well, next visit, yeah, visit her again. What did she, what did she think yeah. after the result? What did she think after the result? She said medical. She was fully, because actually it arrived just when we, when I visited her, I was sitting on her, in her office when that blood test arrived on her computer. It was with the light and she looked at it and her this reaction said, this is medical. She didn't, she didn't faint, did she? <laughs> medical. And this is what people telling me, oh, I'm just exception. I'm just something extraordinary. I am something, <laughs> it might be some alien, you know, I thought she but have, it's I not thought for she them, only for before. Them. Again? I thought she would have fainted on the floor. The floor. <laughs> uh, so when, so so when do you think, uh, when do you think your book or books will uh, be published? You have a date set? Well, I hope. Well, most of it is done, really. I, what I'm doing, I'm doing mainly now the corrections. And I have a big break again. And then, uh, now I'm going through the 
face when I try to go going back to it. I, I find very always difficult to back, go back to it when something yeah. disturbs me from it, some event or whatever in my life. So I really hope that any day now I go back to it and uh, that's really my my focus now. Right, right. And, and it's, uh, it's in English or is in Czech or English? Or is it both in Czech well, and English? It's, and when it's all corrected, I would have it translated to English. Uh huh. That's good because uh, another word that that's good because uh, a lot of my uh, family is Czech, so they can read it. You have a Czech family. We have a uh, family on the Greek side and Czech side. Even though I don't consider myself. I'm sorry, any... you I am so sorry, jumping in. I just say this and then I let you speak. And sorry for yeah. the rudeness. Jumping in. It's okay. He, I I know Greek guy. I'm not in contact with him yet. I bet you anything. When he's around your age, his father, his both parents are Greek. Maybe you related there somewhere in that family, you know, they have a big family, so Greeks and Czechs too before. So I tell me again, my, please. I told you, maybe he's my twin. You have a twin, you know, you are aware of having twin? <laughs> but, <laughs> are you joking? <laughs> the, the, the gentleman we were talking about before, and you said he looks like me, and he. Yes. He thought, he, I, I told him I thought maybe maybe he's my twin, my last long twin somewhere from another from another world or pa past life or something. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, maybe maybe. Also, I believe you may be related on Earth as well, like blood blood relation somehow in the last yeah, some possible there. Because are you very tall? Not really. I'm five. I'm average, like five seven. Well, I don't know. I don't know in centimeters. You're average. But I'm not sure about centimeters, but uh, five foot seven inches. Anyway, we let go of that. He's very tall. This guy. We let uh, go of that one. I may try to somehow uh, con con get the contact on him, but I sure. wonder you tell me now your history, uh, Czech and and Greek. To speak. If you could tell me your Czech and Greek family history. History? I don't know really the history. My mom the, didn't really tell me much of the history. <laughs> and uh, I'm, not really, I'm not really into history, actually, family history. But you never know. One day, maybe a biography, <laughs> my own biography, so autobiography. But uh, I was born in Canada, yeah. so I don't really, I don't really know. Um, my parents really didn't talk too much about uh, history. My, my dad passed away when I was very young. So, you know, poor eating habits, smoking, all uh -huh. that stuff. And uh, my mom spoke English like usually, but when we were with the family and friends, we would speak Czech or Greek, you know, sometimes. Most of the, most of my, most of my family's side, my um, family tree is Czech, but it's kind of mixed because uh, the Greeks at one point they moved uh, because of communism they moved uh, to Czech Czechoslovakia at the time, and that's how there's a lot of Greeks in Czechoslovakia. So, you know, I mean, there's yes, they all moved all over the place. So, but um, my mom grew up. Uh, she was born in uh, Mikolov. Maybe you know Mikolov. It's a small yes. little village. Yeah, Moravia, very well. Yeah, very well known. Yeah, so she was she was basically born there, and uh, my uncle, so her brother-in-law, uh, was born in Slovak Republic, which was funny because um, my dad's uh, sister is Greek, so my dad is my dad's side is Greek, which we don't we don't really speak to their family anymore. Um, but um, long story long story about that, and I don't even know even know what happened. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't really I don't really know too much about the about the history of my family. That's the thing. We kind of my mom and I we kind of wanna we just kind of wanna let go of it, you know. 
forget it, let go <laughs> of our history. But yeah. uh, it seems that it seems that my my grandmother uh, did write her own. Uh, I think it was I can't remember if it was a Greek or Czech because she knew both languages. My grandmother. She was born actually in Armenia. Uh, she moved to Greece when she was young, uh, I believe. But she wrote a short autobiography about herself. So I haven't read it yet. It's uh, I think my mom translated it to English. And uh, I have a hope one day maybe to publish that somewhere. But I haven't read it yet, so mm -hmm. I don't know what's, what's in it, if it's even vegan or not. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> well... Who knows? It would be some but inside. It is, but, it is, uh, but but my mom did talk about a little bit about how uh, my my grandmother and grandfather experienced uh, the war, the First World War, maybe the second one too. I'm not sure, but the first one for sure. And I remember the funny thing about my grandmother was that she was featured in two movies like actually like chick movies which was pretty funny like she was one huh? one time like a little child very very short i think it was uh uh one of those uh, silent pictures and then another one when she was uh, in her in her younger years you know so that was pretty quite cool to see her you know in a video and you know they, they they remastered the video and everything and we got to see it so the whole Kind of like a like a me like a uh, the media family came to, to watch it here in Canada, and we were kind of like friends, some friends too as well, like close friends. And we saw that film of her, so it was pretty cool to see her. But she was only it was only like a like a little segment, couple couple minutes segment. So we don't have we don't have many many celebrities, definitely not many <laughs> celebrities in the family. But I want to get back to you, uh, Peta. Uh, and okay. I'm not sure if okay. Mango's there yeah. too, but uh, talk a little bit about um, the film that you were in and how the, tell me your experience of uh, how pure, how it was to be in a documentary, Pure Fruit. Tell us your experience. It was how beautiful. Long ago was it was the <laughs> again. That that was sorry. That was two thousand and twelve. You remember? Uh, mango. What year was that? Pure fruit. Two thousand nine. Ah, two thousand nine. Wow. End of the year. End of the year two thousand nine. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so tell well, us your experience uh, with that film. It was really good, surprisingly good. I was a bit worried about it. I'm very camera shy, you know, as far as still camera goes. The weirdest faces when somebody wants to take a photo of me. So I was really a little bit worried about that one. And then I said, well, well I have to just wait and see. My window days. Those professional people, they know how to deal with people like me, you know. <laughs> right. And I let go of that. And then this beautiful young people came in, you know, uh, the students of uh, documentary. That was their last year. And uh, they were first time in Australia. And first time they met people who live on the fruit, you know. And they was very keen on the topic and everything. And they the people very easy and beautiful to work with, you know, flexible and open-minded and all that. They ate also a lot of fruit with us. And um, and um, yeah, we just travel up here and uh, through the day we will have a few meetings and they will tell, tell us what to do and we will just follow their things and we can put any input in if we want to or we, we have a full on say in everything but we didn't match we leave it on them we left it on them in the end really and and uh, we travel up here and when we spent few days here on a 
Scrooge farm, in the Utopia farm, uh, which was interesting. Oh. There was a few interesting people there at the time. And uh, well, uh, I, I believe we all have a really good time uh, doing that movie. And uh, we actually recently spoke to the guy and uh, asked him if he would be open to one after 10 years follow up, which is next year. And he said he is open to it, but he's not promising anything concrete. There is some hope. Yeah, because um, I heard that the same gentleman who did uh, Pure Fruit, he did a few years later. I don't know if he did, if he actually created the film or if he just helped on it, but he did uh, another film, Woodstock Fruit Festival documentary. So that's something also to take a look at. It's funny that. Pure Fruit and the other one that I just mentioned, uh, Woodstock Fruit Festival documentary, those two films were the ones that got me started to eat again durian because uh, uh, let me tell you a story <laughs> actually, a pretty, pretty cute story about durians. When I was younger in my teens, my mom would bring home frozen durian because in Canada uh, you can only, you, well, you can get the uh, fresh durian, but it's, it's a lot of times it's spoiled, um, you know. But the frozen ones mm. you can mm. you can get you can get, which is pretty good, uh, pretty expensive now. But at the time it was uh, pretty inexpensive, about a dollar a pound uh, <laughs> Canadian, uh, which is basically the same uh, same in Australian dollars. Um, mm. So anyway, she would bring that home, and I would be so appalled. I would like tell her like. Don't bring that thing in because it smells up the whole house. And I don't want the fridge, like, leave it outside. And she would bring it always home, you know, every so often and put it in the fridge and start <laughs> eating. And I ate it a couple times, you know. And it was disgusting. I'm like, ah, what is this? A dirty sock. I threw it away, you know. Huh. So I tried it a few times. I don't probably four or five times. Um, probably on my fifth or sixth time after watching these, after watching these two documentaries, specifically the the Woodstock Food Festival documentary, I said to myself, "Okay, I'm going to try this durian one more time and see how I, you know, like just one more time. I'm going to try it. This was like the fifth or sixth time of trying it. So I said, I'm going to try it one more time. This is the time when I was, of course, vegan." So, you know, a lot of the uh, old toxins and things from eating animal foods for the first 26 years of my life, that kind of like already have already go, have, has gone, gone away. Um, mm. But uh, I tried it. And the durian that I had, I don't know what, what type of durian it was, but it was so good. I loved it. And it's like one of my favorite fruits <laughs> now, but, but I, it's hard to, like in Canada, it's hard to find unless you go to a special like Asian market or something. It's very, very hard to find. Mm. It's very expensive. It's like three, $3 a pound right now for, for frozen and at least five or $6 a pound for fresh. So it's really, really pricey. And it used to be like 99 cents, like, Couple, like a, like ten like ten twenty years ago maybe it used to be like ninety nine cents maybe even forty nine cents a pound so who knows why things are going up in price like that especially produce when it's like so easy that's true to grow and to why do you why 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 do you think that uh, like why do you think all these all these fresh foods that are like so easy to grow but I mean of course they take a long time. But why do you think they're like so expensive compared to other products, like animal <laughs> products? And stuff? I think it's very. My conclusion is that it's healthy, and that's why everything what is natural and healthy today is very expensive. You think maybe the subsidy for animal agriculture is driving those prices down 
So technically, like artificially, it seems that food is more expensive. Yeah, they just, they can put uh, small prices on the food. They don't want to. I don't believe uh, they promote a really healthy eating. I believe they promote opposite and therefore uh, they know if they put a big price on the food, not many people is going to eat it because people always look at their pockets, rich or poor. So how is it? So how is it in Australia? Like the meat, dairy, egg consumption is very high. Do do you think? Do you think? That, I mean, have you met a lot of vegans and fruitarians there? Yeah, well, it's they supposed to breaking start breaking records in Australia in the numbers, uh, vegans, for example. But true is, Australia slept for many many years was mainly meat oriented. Uh, by industries and con uh, food consumption. Uh, this is bri uh, almost relatively new that uh, they have a lot of fresh produce, uh, thanks to Greeks and Italians and, and Yugoslavian people, you know, they, they settle here and they, they start growing big uh, fruit orchards and stuff and uh, making big fruit shops. And uh, like still in uh, like 50 years, uh, say in 1950s was very poor here with fruit. I know when I, when I arrived to Australia, I was 86, and I was told by many people, you are lucky you come here uh, around this time, not earlier, like 10 years earlier, there was uh, fruit was still very scarce. So mm -hmm. Australia is doing well com considering its history uh, with the food, uh, but true is, uh, especially likely, it's about already like uh, about 10 years ago, uh, I used to watch a bit of media when I lived in Sydney and uh, there was news like the, the health of people uh, coming down too fast and uh, this is no good and uh, soon we're going to have uh, too many sick people and who's going to work for, for, you know, all the taxes and what, what have you and, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And uh, they start promoting uh, and uh, they said it's really, really alarming and uh, the government itself start promoting healthy eating and uh, that meant wow. five servings fruit and vegetables a day <laughs> and since then yeah yeah no and since then Absolutely. since then the prices of fresh produce is skyrocketing last yeah. 10 years so we we used to have 10 years ago, uh, Julian, $3 kilo. I don't know the pounds, I know kilograms only. Okay, yeah. uh, now it's like we don't even get it. They don't even order it. Supermarket don't even order it anymore to start with. Here in, we will have to go to Sydney or Brisbane, big city to get it. Wow. Not only that, but the local Julian, we buy here fresh one. Is fifteen dollars kilo? Whoa! No way! And you know, half of it is skin. You know, skin is thick and and, and heavy in yeah. most of the durian. And the capsicum, for example, used to be one dollar kilo. You know what is it now? Around ten dollar um, kilo. Seven, so eight, do, nine dollar. How do vegans and vegetarians survive in, in Australia? Well, you have to shop around. You have to look your, for your shop. Like what we do, we fund our farmers, we buy direct from farmers, and we buy from markets. We go also to supermarket, we buy some things at supermarket, we can't buy otherwise. Uh, we buy them, and uh, we buy them only if they're really good quality, of course, but only if they're on a special, too. You know, when they come like grapes, for example, when they come in, we can buy here in this region grapes only, only in the supermarket so far. The locals ones are very short. We, we have them here only for like one month and they cost like $15 a kilo, yeah. And next day they gone kind of thing. They're not even very wow. good quality. So we buy supermarkets ones because they're good quality and they cost half price and they like, 
uh, have a, they, they have them for five months, you know, we can have a five months grape juice. And we only uh, drink drink the juices. So we, we compromise, we buy also supermarket food when it's good good price, you know, when they have a heaps of it, when it's a full season, it's always good price, yes? And uh, we we, cons we know uh, good quality, so if there's no good quality, we don't buy it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we, but most our food comes directly from farmers. I right. are either straight from the, from the markets, from the farmers markets we have here on a regular basis. And we getting beautiful stuff. We are happy with it and good price. We buy uh, buy of oranges at the markets, uh, 20 kilo of oranges, big bag, $20, 12, $12. So uh, Australia uses a uh, kilo? Yes. Canada's Canada's kind of uh, mixed up. They use both kilo and pound. <laughs> so I'm always confused sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in Australia, but, uh, old people use pounds because it comes from England. Oh, yeah. But uh, mm -hmm. the people like, you know, already my, my generation, I'm 60, you know, 80 year old people and like around that age they would still use mm -hmm. pounds but we already using meters and kilometers mm -hmm. yeah that's funny because it's canada's easier to remember canada's kind of funny because we kind of follow us in some way when it comes to like weight like pounds in, in our weight height and uh doing like uh for example construction you're like building a house or something you would use like feet and inches but then if you're to do <laughs> like if you were to do like um like measuring like long distance like roads and stuff you would use like kilometers or you would use like meters but <laughs> so it's kind of like <laughs> england has both i think so yeah it's a bit that's, silly that's how yeah. the world is unfortunately but uh yeah the it doesn't make sense the kilometer the the metric system is very very um easy you know to use simple yeah so what uh yeah i agree yeah sorry go ahead no i only said that i agree that's all and i'm checking and i'm waiting for you talking <laughs> ah uh, if anybody has any questions, and I'm not sure if there's many people online, but do post them. The uh, chat is either to the bottom or to the right of your screen, depending if you're on a PC, mm -hmm. if you're on a desktop, or if you're on a. So if anybody I has have any a questions, uh -huh. well, I <laughs> okay. Don't, I don't yeah, see there's uh, anything the, anywhere. Like, doesn't seem no no people will ask questions it's on uh it's on another page it's actually on the video page where the questions come up they should come up here but for some reason doesn't come up here so they have the uh -huh. people can ask questions on the actual video page and uh there's right now there's no questions so i guess we'll We'll end this very shortly, but anything else you want to let the audience know about, you know, being vegan or being fruitarian, like any any tips or anything that you just want to say to people? Yes. Well, I recommend it, of course, because I have visited the best experience and the people I recommended before, they also do have a best experience. Uh, of existence, you know, uh, life with fruit. Uh, there are people who are vegans and they cook and what have you, and they not even raw. But I, I believe uh, humans have to go forward, and if we want to really be healthy and happy beings, we should learn about our natural food, what actually it is, and uh, and uh, pay some respect to it, and and understanding that there are people who are really doing it 
and they happy and they they living beautiful happy life where well, i'm one of them you know mm -hmm. and uh, it's the, the life never have a, its quality as rich and beautiful as if you feeling bright when you feeling energy energetic when you um you know you're not scared not to eat because you have experienced fasting for you mm -hmm. if, if some disaster comes and suddenly there's no food anywhere it it gives a beautiful comfort to the soul knowing that come on i can live for many years even with for many days i mean without uh, to food and i can even live a long time without water too and uh, stuff like this and um all in all it's just i think person never can experience the quality of life it's it in its full potential unless the health is also uh normal so to speak we all think we are healthy many people think i'm healthy i have no health problems but actually they do but they think that's just normal thing like have a headache or stomach ache or feeling dizzy or woozy or what have you or tired or you know mm -hmm. and i know a lot of people today without coffee they wouldn't even get out of their bed you know and they they do have to enhance their energies and they have to um after food uh, heavy food they feel lazy and sleepy and this doesn't exist on a fruit diet when the, when a human eats a raw fruit raw fresh fruit of a good quality tasty fruit the only fruit they eat, uh, the taste desires uh, mm -hmm. there is nothing wrong uh, going on uh, in the body or mind uh, you know and also there is that lightness of everything it's so easy and and simple and beautiful and and it smells beautiful and it's just everywhere joyful in all sides it's very joyful to be with fruit in such a uh, everyday connection and uh, you know when i ate everything i always like to eat i think that's typical for humans we, we enjoy food we enjoy eating but since i become fruitarian i i i, I enjoy food more than ever i so looking forward to next meal or when we go shopping in a market or when we pick some nice fruit in a garden it's it's such a beautiful feeling and experience and mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's you know it's yeah i can't compare it to the standing by the stove before and making some recipes from my head and and uh, always uh, by the stove and washing heaps of dishes <laughs> i don't need any detergents uh, we don't use any chemicals as far food goes we don't use any chemicals as far the, any products of uh, daily use is used only what we use is the petrol we use petrol at least possible we, we drive car at least possible to be abuse of course uh, stuff like this uh, i can't think now of anything hardly anything we try to live simple as can be but so we using as at least to, to earth resources you know we have a computer but we know it's wrong in a way and uh, we would like one day maybe let let go of all this you know after we have written all the books we want to write and so mm -hmm. on after we, we and mango have a goal to give a message to the world a positive message open try to open eyes of people who are sleeping who unfortunately have to suffer because they that they just don't know the basics of the basics and that's what we should eat and how we supposed to actually live 
you know, pe people chasing money and yet they die, they go, they leave it all behind uh, with, with usually no uh, profit to anybody really. Uh, money can be more uh, uh, curse than blessings in many people's lives. Exactly. And, uh, and I really believe we 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 heading very very wrong direction for a very very long time, and uh, people like me and Mango and you and so on, uh, they need to uh, speak as much they can uh, is their ability uh, to share their knowledge and experience uh, with the others uh, to help humanity get forward. To get out of that rut, uh, for God's sakes, because all we have is our souls. And I urge every human being, please turn to your heart, turn to your soul. Be all I have a capability to love. Please love. Grow it. It grows. Believe me. It grows beautifully. Give it chance. Let it grow in all direction of your life. And then you will find the meaning of life. Then you will find true happiness of your life. Yeah, beautiful. That's that's how I feel. And you know, sometimes and you know sometimes I feel that um that's all that we can do you know keep sharing this message which is a positive loving compassionate message and to understand that you know humanity is in the mess that we are in today and that a lot of people are just so hardwired so indoctrinated by the food and the clothing and the music and all the bombardment, uh, you know, from advertising and fast food and, you know, animal products and so forth. And all we can do is just, you know, instill that, you know, try to plant that seed of love within people. And I love what you and Mango are doing because it's, it's the right way. It's really the right way is trying to share that message. And I agree that yeah, I don't want to live with computers and I don't want to live with this and that. And I try to minimize in my life, I try to minimize as much of the harm that I can. You know, I try to get rid of as much chemicals as I can throughout my life. I try to do the least harm that I can. And uh, that starts, basically starts with our, our food and trying to eat as much fruit as we possibly can is the you know first step of course being vegan is the first step and then going from there because i specifically talk about this in my books uh, especially the lost love and our path to freedom is that the the basis of this whole journey is really starting at vegan point because nobody can nobody can say that vegetarianism or pescatarianism whatever whatever term you want to use is the starting point because there's still violence in there and yes there's there's some violence in veganism but that we need to understand that veganism stems from uh an ethic which donald watson coined in 1944 yes. it's an ethic it's a moral for other living beings and i even include uh that's why you got to go further and i even include plants in that sphere of compassion and trying to do the least harm that we can to plants. And fruit is a very good example because you pick it from the, from the tree, you pick the fruit from the tree or even from the ground, like whatever has fallen. And uh, unfortunately in our chaotic, crazy world that we live in, we don't live in a world where we can just pick fruit off a tree. And so we've got to do our best when it comes to, you know, our buying choices and um, buying power. But we can definitely, uh with uh within our uh other buying choices like products like the laundry detergents and things that people buy on and you know every so often we can definitely make better choices and to actually read labels and even create our own if we need if we need to and then eventually of course foregoing all those products because once eating a fruit diet as you know and uh, you know a lot of other fruitarians know 
that uh, you know we, we the body has less odor, bad odor, and we need less you know shampoos and soaps and all these things. And eventually, you know, all that is needed is probably like fruit skins, you know, rubbing on your on your own skin, maybe some lemon, you know lemon juice on your hair or something like that you know before you shower exactly. so one, one step at a time but uh i thank you so much for joining us here today we don't have much time because actually we had uh too much time on mangoes so i was gonna cut it a little bit short today um and i have a busy day tomorrow because tomorrow we're we have a land that we're here here we have another i'm, I'm working in a work away and we have a land in a nearby city, a nearby uh, village. And uh, we do all sorts mm -hmm. of things. We're growing all, all kinds of fruits and veggies and things over there. So, which is great. And we're doing all kinds of projects for solar power and things like that. So, and building, which is great. So, mm -hmm. that, uh, I want to thank you so much for being on here. And we're going to end this with uh, just one announcement before we end this. As always, there's always an announcement. And that is, please, if anybody's <laughs> listening or listening at any time, uh, do go to fruitnut.net. It's in the description, or it's going to be in the, it's in the, yeah, it's in the description. Uh, fruitnut.net. So your book, when it's available, it will be on that website? I think so. Okay. I will definitely so, announce it and where it is. Okay, so how I, it's will, I will definitely I will definitely be looking forward to that because I want to read that in the future when you have the English version, of course. <laughs> Unfortunately I don't read uh Czech. I don't e I don't even speak it, but uh <laughs> I must be ashamed. But anyways, um I do I do understand it though, like when people speak it, so cool. which is good. <laughs> I'm pretty bad yeah, about that is handy. I'm pretty bad with languages. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty like close-minded when it comes to languages. I, I know English and I know a little bit like a basic communication of Greek, but that's about it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah, so anyway, so get uh you can check out um, definitely check out get and mango's website uh foodnut.net and also lastly uh, don't forget if you're vegan there's a book called How to Create a Perfect Vegan Life. So if you want to be a vegan advocate and strive to not burn out and earn a little bit of money to, you know, to live in this crazy world, uh, this very, very short book, How to Create a Perfect Vegan Life, is definitely for you. And it's available now in paperback version. It's about 50-some pages. It's also available as a Kindle. Amazon Kindle and uh, PDF. And also don't forget our path to freedom. It's a pre-order. So special pre-order price for that on Amazon or just go to weareinterconnected.com. It's all in the description anyways, down below the video. So you'll be able to just click on there and find that book. It's a pre-order. So do get the book and uh, would appreciate uh, reviews, Amazon reviews. It really helps with the uh, not only the ranking, and, but just to like the searchable, it's very, very, very uh, more readily searchable on uh, Amazon as well as a lot of different search engines like DuckDuckGo.com and Google and Yahoo and all those. So do uh, write a review as well. And don't forget, I keep posting videos on many different topics related to veganism and fruitarianism and meditation and spirituality and ethics environment and so forth so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up share it around with all your friends and family and don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel because i know you want to subscribe to the youtube channel and click that little bell beside the subscribe because if you don't you won't get notifications to your email so do that and i want to thank once again kveta for Thank you so much, Pieta, for being here. And we will definitely in the future have another hangout. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. Really and enjoyed it. Thank you. And have a, blessed, you. have a blessed day. 
<laughs> you too. All the best. So, Lot of nice fruit. Okay, for sure. Bye. And uh, once again, thank you everybody for joining us today. And I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Okay.